Okay. So our novel actually does um, use history's influence. It talks about the history between the Native Americans and the US government. And so we see specific things in, um, we see specific things reference, particularly the Trail of Tears. Uh, the Trail of Tears, I can't tell you the year that it happened, but it was a forced migration of Native Americans off of their land onto reservations. And reservations still exist today. You're gonna see that in the novel, which is near Lipo's uh, cocaine reservation. He, Shannon Alexi, also references Indian boarding schools. These were attempts to quote unquote civilize Native American children. They were taken from their homes and they were put in these boarding schools where they suffered a number of abuses. Um, they were beaten, they were starved, they were punished if they talked in their native language. And so he also references Indian boarding schools. And so that's kind of how we see history influence in our novel. And so whenever you're reading, you want to look for like specific references. For our novel, it's mostly social context. Because he talks about uh, the racism that Junior faces. He talks about the poverty that Junior faces. He talks about the um, history of alcoholism and drug abuse in his family that he faces. So it is mostly social context in our novel. But he does reference some historical events, too. So some other examples of works that use historical context. Game of Thrones references War of the Roses. Um, even though it takes place in a fictional world, it's kind of based around this historical event called the War of the Roses. Um, Psycho is going over Ed Gein's killings. Jaws, have you guys seen Jaws with the shark? Yeah. So some of us have, some of us haven't. Um, Jaws is actually based on a string of freak shark attacks in 1916, and I had to look that up because I didn't know that on my own. And then, of course, the book thief, if you've read or the book or seen uh, the movie, it takes place in World War II, and it references the history of World War II in Germany. So some other notes. Um, in your work, you're not going to find all three um, types of context, author, social, and historical. We got lucky with our book because our book was started out as a memoir of Sherman Alexie. So he has his own personal experiences in the novel. He talks about the social issues that Native Americans face today, and he references the history of Native Americans and the U.S. government. So we got lucky with our book. We do have all three types of context in our book, but you're not going to find that for every writing. That's okay. Um, I also kind of want to go over the midterm. In week seven, which I'm going to open for you next week, in our three-week block, there is going to be midterm instructions. That's the wrong midterm, hold on. Whoops. The midterm is gonna be over the book and it's gonna be an expansion of the context writings you've been doing. You've been putting the work into context and for the midterm, you're going to expand on that. You're gonna be working with our novel you're going to expand on the skills in the context analysis assignments. Um, you are going to pick one or more types of context. You can do author, social, or historical. If you want to do all three, that's fine. If you want to just do a couple of them, that's okay. Um, but you need to have at least one. It's going to be a short essay. And you can prepare to your comfort level. So you can use the novel on this test. You can use your notes on this test. You can use your previous assignments. You can do research for this test. The only thing is, is if you do research, you are gonna have to cite, um, just cite with the author and the title of the work. Just be like, according to such and such and so and so, boom. Okay, so it's be an expansion on the uh, context writings you've been doing, and that's our midterm. The midterm will not open until week eight, but you have time to prepare. Okay. So the social context would be the one we're normal. We have been doing normally. Is that yes, the like that's 
Yeah, it's the one we did last week is social contacts. Okay. And honestly, I think that's going to be where you find the most information. Like, it's going to be where you're going to be able to do the most academic work for our novel. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, what about our Martha Luther King? Martha, I don't know why I keep on saying that. Martin Luther King. <laughs> Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay, yeah, we um, we read Martin Luther King, we were going to put it in the social context, and then I got sick, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and, okay, so for the Martin Luther King uh, reading, what we did is we were looking for social context, what social um, issues were being referenced in the speech. So you were right, it does take place in the Civil Rights Movement, that's when he wrote it. And so we need to look at what issues he's actually talking about. Okay, so uh, I had wrote Martha, or Martin Luther King Jr. Civil Rights Movement against uh, racial segregation and police brutality in March 1955. Uh, uh, Claudine, or how do you say that? Calvin something was a 15 year old black schoolgirl in Montgomery who refused to give up her bus or her bus seat to a white man in violation of Jim Crow law in the southern United States that enforced racial segregation. So, which I said this was my part, which I think is bull crap, finders keepers. And uh let's see and then also same thing with rosa parks and then let's see king had been arrested during uh the campaign I'm trying to hurry up, go through it real fast. No, you're fine. You're okay. So far, you're hitting on really good stuff. You have like some social context and you have a little bit of historical context as well, which as um, I've said, the two are very closely linked. Yeah. So, good deal. And then it also talks about how, what's his name? Uh, during the protest, the Birmingham Police Department uh, led Eugene Bull Corner, Connor used high pressure water jets and police dog against protesters, including children. And they had uh, footage of it. Okay. Okay. So, yes, all of this is relevant information. Um, he does talk about segregation, and we see that 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still badly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. And so, um, and you pull in some historical context with like Jim Crow laws, which is uh, highly relevant, and you pull in examples with Claudine and Rosa um, about how they were forced, uh, they were try, uh, they refused to give up their seats uh, to white passengers, and that kind of started these boycotts and these protests. Uh, you, oh, oh, dog. <laughs> Um, it's a great Dane. So, oh, great. I had a great Dane. He was my first dog. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's so pretty too, but she's like in the kitchen. Oh, because <laughs> I'm here smelling my computer. She heard you guys talking, but and she like came and smelled it. That's cute. Like, <laughs> this is just. This is unrelated to what we're talking about, but I love dogs, <laughs> and I love how, like, they'll just come up and they'll sniff computers and people are watching. <laughs> yeah, my dog Pepper's really bad about that. Um, anyways, you also bring up the fact that Martin Luther King Jr., he did get arrested in Birmingham. Uh, mm -hmm. The mayor of Birmingham, Alabama, did authorize the use of um, high-pressure water to, like, they're not, oh. <laughs> she's, Olivia. So cute. She's like big too. <laughs> she, is, she looks big. She's real pretty. What's her name? Olympia. Olympia is a pretty name. Yes. 
Um, and he didn't authorize the use of uh, high pressure water hoses on protesters, including children. And so that's all important historical um, information that helps us put the work in context. Yeah. So, very good. Um, he also does make some references to, um, let's see, where is it? Let freedom ring. Like that's a, that's a very common phrase in America. Um, I actually think that's like part of our national anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he makes reference to the national anthem. Um, he makes reference to, of course, the Bible because he was a preacher. Um, so yeah, uh, we hit the important stuff though. Uh, segregation, Jim Crow laws, and uh, Birmingham, which is a very important part, which is a little bit of author context as well because he was arrested in Birmingham. Yeah. I, oh my gosh. I had wrote like, I don't know. I wrote a bunch about it. And I was like, okay, Kelly, you're getting off subject. Cause I was talking about when he's a child, I think this would be author context because I remember I was talking about, he's a child. He and his father got pulled over by a police officer and the police officer had called his father a boy. And he's like, no, I'm a man. My son's a boy. And so I was like, okay, Kelly, stop. Well, he actually like in the full speech, like, I think, I think it's the I have a dream speech. He actually makes reference to that in one of his writings, and I think it's the speech. We don't have that excerpt, but he does make reference to that. Yeah. So, okay, cool, cool, cool beans. Okay, do you guys have any questions? Mm. We're going to turn this in. No, this was just for discussion. Okay, I wasn't sure if we did or not. Yeah, this was just for, like, extra practice to help with the writing. Can you explain that music? thing that we had to do again? Like, yeah, absolutely. So in week six, you are going to see a discussion board. You're going to pick three pieces of music with a common theme. So examples, three pieces of rap music, three pieces of country music, three pieces of alternative music. And then you're going to tell your classmates about these music by giving a brief summary and then explaining the context. So if the author references their life, you're going to explain that. If the author references social issues, you're going to explain that. Um, country is really good for uh, author context. A lot of country authors will use like their own life experiences. Uh, Taylor Swift is one I can think of on the top of my head. Um, rap music is really good for social issues. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, Jay-Z. Um, they talk about issues that face, you know, communities of color, and so that's really good for social issues. Um, historical context, maybe some of the older songs, maybe like jazz or something, you'd be able to find historical context. But essentially, you're just going to give a brief summary, here's what the song's about, and then you're going to put it into context for us. So it would just be like summaries? Uh, summaries is going to be a part of it. Like, you're going to tell us what it's about, like summarize. And then kind of give us like a summary of the context. Okay. And uh, what's the minimum that we can write? Um, I'm going to say like probably about 200 words would like be a good minimum. Like that'd be a good thing to like shoot for. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? Mm -mm. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you on Thursday. All right, thank you. Thank you.